The 31st Premier League season begins earlier than usual with Crystal Palace facing Arsenal tonight as football tries to fit in a Winter World Cup. The biggest change is that each team can make five substitutions, a game up from three. Defending champions, Manchester City will aim to win the title for the third successive season, while the likes of Liverpool, Chelsea, Arsenal and Manchester United, alongside Tottenham Hotspur, will be in and around the top four for yet another exciting season of the English domestic top flight tournament. Good morning, I am Praram Vadahal. Let's begin with the main stories. The government announces provincial and parliamentary elections on the 20th of November. Party registration to begin from coming Sunday. Parties intensify poll strategies. 800 megawatts of electricity from 57 projects being added to the national grid. The authority projects selling energy to India to earn 16 billion rupees annually. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan scheduled to meet with his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin today. Turkish leaders' international credentials bolstered by agreement resuming exports of Ukrainian and Russian agro. And New Zealand claimed first T20 international against the Netherlands by a narrow margin of 16 runs. The second match of the tournament slated for later tonight. The government has decided to hold the provincial and parliamentary elections in a single phase on the 20th of November later this year. A meeting of the Council of Ministers held at the office of the Prime Minister and the Council of Ministers in Singadarwar yesterday decided to hold the provincial and parliamentary elections in a single phase on the 20th of November in just over three months' time. The government has said that the term of the current parliamentarians is to expire following the registration of candidacies for the election. At a time when dilemma was persisting regarding the term of the parliamentarians, the government has issued this clarification. It has announced the election date after reaching consensus among the parties in the ruling coalition. Prior to this, the election commission had met with Prime Minister Sher Badadewa on the 6th of July and recommended holding the elections in a single phase on the 18th of November. Following the declaration of the date for the provincial and parliamentary elections by the government, the Election Commission has said that it will begin required procedures including registration of parties from Sunday next week. Following the announcement of the election dates, the Election Commission has said that procedures for registration of political parties for the polls are to begin. The Commission is also to begin works for registration of candidacies for the provincial and parliamentary elections. The Commission has also expressed its commitment of ensuring a free and fair polls. The Commission has 107 days to prepare for the elections. The Apex Election Authority has said that it ex expects the addition of around 1 million voters for the November 20 election. A total of 17.6 million voters are currently registered at the Election Commission. In our Public Voice segment, we have asked in several provinces regarding the evaluation of the five-year term of the provincial government. Let us now take a look at what they had to say. Public Voice. <laughs> मारुले हमरों को रा छिटे सुन्दी नून ना जनता ले महसूस करने पर नहीं होती वो महसूस सही आते थी करने पाका सही ना यहाँ तो बहुत सारे बड़ा उन्हें चीज़ रा बहुत सारे बड़ा उन्हें चीज़ वो मात्रे को रा आरु भाई रा चा सरकार छा पांच बार सवा दिन में छा वो निबुझियों हैं मिले तारा तारा यहाँ से विकास From blackout as long as 18 hours a day to zero load shedding and now the prospect of adding 808 megawatts of electricity from 57 projects to the national transmission grid within a year, Nepal indeed has come a long way. The Nepal Electricity Authority has plans to generate around 16 billion rupees in revenue by selling surplus electricity after meeting the domestic demand. The then Prime Minister Chandra Samsher had constructed the first farping hydroelectricity project over 100 years ago. Back then, hydro projects had not conceptualized in China, while well, it was only a year that India had begun using electricity. However, Nepal has failed in achieving expected progress in terms of power generation since then. But there are optimistic signs now. With 735 megawatts electricity added from the 24 projects last year, 808 megawatts electricity is to be added to the national grid this year from 48 hydel and 9 solar projects. With this, domestic supply of power will exceed demand. 
The NEA is planning to export the excess electricity to generate 16 billion rupees in revenue. Nepali nationals were compelled to suffer power cuts up to 18 hours a day for 14 years until half a decade back. While the problem of random power cuts persists, Nepal is heading on a positive path in power trade. The NEA has claimed that Nepal will make a profit of around 6 billion rupees through power trade next year. However, existing hydro projects have not been able to operate in full capacity in the face of complications including obstructions by the local residents and delay by contractors in the construction of transmission lines and substations. It is now time for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse brought to you by Omega Secondary School and College Kumari Pati Lalitpur Milestone International College Balkumari Lalitpur Active Academy College Basandhara Kathmandu Siam College Old Banishwar Kathmandu Hero Super Splendor Nepal Ko Ati Lokopriya Motorcycle Guest College in SS Kamal Pokhari Kathmandu Global College International Mead Banishwar Kathmandu Bali Public High School, Sundar Basti, Buranil Kanta. Nepal Mega College, Babar Mahal, Kathmandu. Kathmandu Model College, Balkumari, Lalitpur. Sundar Takalagi, Rose Faiso. Kathmandu Bernhardt College, Bafal, Kathmandu. Texas International College, Mitra Park, Chabe Hill. The question is, what should be done to maximize electricity consumption? Your options are A, increase access, B, make it cheaper, and C, enhance the use of electric appliances. The voting is on, type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and then send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. It is now time for the sports news. Sports news. Athletes in Nepal are compelled to pursue their careers amid scarce facilities and unforeseen pressures. Most athletes of developed nations are provided with infrastructures including well-facilitated hostels, training centers, hospitals and even museums. Despite the evident economic divide between such nations and Nepal, the National Sports Council has begun preparations for the construction of a three-star hotel-level modern hostel and a sports museum with a movie hall. This move from the National Sports Governing Authority has enthused the athletes and the coaches. In the absence of good hostels, the National Sports Council and related sports associations were compelled to hire hotels for the accommodation of the athletes. On several occasions, the athletes themselves had to rent places to compete at tournaments. Alongside financial burden, such situations had also created psychological toll on the athletes. However, the decision of the National Sports Council to construct a well-facilitated hostel near the Mulpani Cricket Ground is to provide some respite to the athletes. It has come to the light that the council has also initiated required efforts for the construction of the facility. The council is also set to build a museum with a movie hall to preserve Nepal's sporting history and achievements. However, the location and the nature of the museum are yet to be decided upon. It may be recalled that there was a hostel for athletes inside the premises of the National Sports Council in Tripureshwar before the devastating earthquake of April 2015. However, the council built a new three-story building after the hostel was damaged by the earthquake. The absence of a proper hostel, therefore, has added burden to the council, associations and the athletes themselves. Despite competitions being held amid issues, including the lack of proper remuneration and facilities, the athletes have been earning medals and success for Nepal. Stakeholders have termed this move of the council to build a well-facilitated hostel to provide some respite to the athletes, a positive initiative. And now before we wrap up, here's a look into the top stories one more time. The government announces provincial and parliamentary elections on the 20th of November. Party registration to begin from coming Sunday. Parties intensify poll strategies. 800 megawatts of electricity from 57 projects being added to the national grid. The authority projects selling energy to India to earn 16 billion rupees annually. Turkish President Erdogan scheduled to meet his Russian counterpart Putin today. Turkish leaders' international credentials bolstered by agreement resuming exports of Ukrainian and Russian agro products. New Zealand claimed their first T20 international against the Netherlands by a narrow margin of 16 runs. Second match of the tournament slated for later tonight. So that is all for the moment. Our next English bulletin airs at 11am. Thank you for staying with us. Have a beautiful day ahead.